videotaping a story, the first step is to set up your phone. I prefer an iPhone 13 or a similar Android phone that will shoot 4K. 4K is the resolution or image quality of the video and is the highest quality setting. It allows reframing your shot when editing. On an iPhone, go to Settings, then scroll down to Camera and open the Camera Settings. Next, change your setting to 4K. I like 24 frames per second because it has more of a film look. As you walk into the room where the interview is going to take place, there are two objectives. First is to create a warm and comfortable relationship with the person you will be videoing. As you are doing that, scan the room for lighting and a good backdrop. Note that in this room there is a large window with lots of light. We will not use that window as a backdrop, but we will use it as a nice light source. I don't want to shoot with this background because it's too busy. We want a background that is not busy or distracting. This is the best background because the wall is 12 feet away. Now shooting someone directly against the wall makes them look like they're in a police lineup. You want distance between your subject and the back wall. Note that there is a warm light in the background. In the film business, we call this a functional. I use a Movo desk tripod, light and shotgun microphone. This setup cost me $99. Conduct the interview sitting at a table. Place the camera setup 24 inches from the subject and frame the shot. 24 inches will give you quality sound and a nice looking picture. What that meant to you. Okay, so I am the youngest of seven children. Sit next to the camera, as close to the lens as possible. We want the eye line of the person close to the camera where we can see both eyes clearly. This is an intimate type of framing where the audience can easily identify with the person telling the story. Otherwise, you'll be shooting the side of their face, which disconnects the audience from the story. Note that she is placed in the right third of the frame. If the storyteller is looking directly at the camera, put them in the center. Not too much headroom like this, but framed like this. If they're looking at you when they tell the story, put them in either the right or the left third of the frame. This type of framing always connects well with the audience. Make sure to check that the microphone is plugged in. I accidentally unplugged it when adjusting the camera, which meant I shot this interview with a camera mic, which was pointed directly at the refrigerator, which then required noise reduction at the final stage of editing. Never shoot a video on a smartphone like this. Turn the camera sideways like this and put it on a tripod. I usually take my phone out of the case when using a tripod. Begin by helping the storyteller feel comfortable. Ask them to pronounce their name and spell it. If you're going to add a name title during the editing process, this will help you get the spelling right, which is incredibly important. My name is Lita Robinson, spelled L-E-T-A-R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N. You may also ask them questions about where they were born and what their hobbies are. As soon as they are comfortable, begin the story. It is important that they are rehearsed before the interview so they can comfortably tell the story from beginning to end. You need to know what the problem is this person had before inspiration, what the inspiration to deal with the solution was, and the outcome of the application of the inspiration. Those are the three points that need to be clear and understandable when they tell their story. When you get to the editing bay, if those three points are clear to you, the editing process will be much easier, and the final product will be moving. I had an older boy who was a senior who randomly started being really unkind to me. It happened once and I was upset by it, but kind of recovered. But then it happened again and it happened again and it, it became this really bullying scenario. One morning I got up and I 
exercised and read my scriptures like I always did, but this time I had a little bit more of a, a reason. I came across this scripture in 3 Nephi chapter 12, verse 44, and it says, But behold, I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you. And that really stood out to me. I suddenly, for the first time in my life, had an enemy. So I just knelt down and I said, okay, God, I am going to pray for this enemy that I have. And I know he's your son. And I know you know him. And you know why he's behaving the way he does. So I just, from the very first class of the day, started to pray for him. And every time he popped in my brain, I just would say, please help him to have a good day, whatever's going on in his life, help it to be healed, help it to be rectified. Mm -hmm. And I think that first day I prayed for him probably 300 times. And I made it through that day. And then miraculously, two weeks after my very first prayer for him, my phone rang, mm -hmm. our old home phones that used to ring. Mm -hmm. My home phone rang. And I picked it up and it was him. Just, I was so surprised that he was calling me, but he said, hey, I, I know I haven't treated you very well and I just want to apologize. Notice that I'm looking directly at the storyteller with great curiosity. Curiosity is key to the interview. Curiosity raises questions and lets the person know you are interested in them. I have them tell the story twice and will ask questions that satisfy my curiosity. Those are the same questions the audience watching the final story will have. Before going to the interview, have the storyteller go through their photos and home movies for material that will help visually tell the story. Ask them to scan the photos if possible. If they don't have a scanner, you can take photographs of the photos with your smartphone. Make sure the framing is correct and there are not shadows. Outside, in full shade where there is diffused light, is sometimes the best. Be sure and take a thumb drive with you for their digital photographs and digital home movies. For this story, I used my iPhone and shot video of a teenager reading her scriptures. This is called B-roll. When shooting B-roll, hold the camera on the shot so you have at least 20 seconds of steady camera work. Note, I shot both the hands on the scripture and the face. We did not use the face, only the hands. This material is called B-roll. Proper B-roll allows you to cut away from the talking head at the appropriate moment. Four minutes of talking head is boring, no matter how engaging the story is. You can't have too much B-roll. The next step of the process is asset management and editing. Over our next lessons, we will cover those steps. <laughs>